Good afternoon, everyone. Today's verse of the day is Matthew 5, 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? The thought for today that I want you to think about is when you give your love out, it does not have to be returned. Give it out as though it does not have to be returned. You see a stranger walking down the street, say hi to him, and they don't have to say hi back. If you give somebody some money, don't expect them to, to give it back. This is probably, this is the second greatest commandment that God gave us to do. If we look in if we look in the parable that Jesus talks about the, the Samaritan on the road, it says, And behold, a lawyer stood up to him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said, Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, he, he desired to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, and, and here's where Jesus gives him, gives him a story, a parable. He said, a man was going down the road, going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. So who is the neighbor? Who is our neighbor? It's the stranger. So love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy self, uh, all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy strength. And love your stranger as thyself. As you go by and you see people, <laughs> even if you go by and you're in a depressing place, let's say you're you're in a inner city and nobody is nice to each other, nobody is talking and, and everybody's just, uh, uh, I'm in the city. <laughs> Say hi to them. Smile. Greet them. Bring joy to them. If you're in a, another place and, and you are an outcast per the culture and people are just being mean to you, Say hi to them and don't expect anything in return. See, the thing we, we need to realize is that sometimes we're watering seeds or watering plants. That person may feel like nobody ever sees me. Everybody is annoying me, uh, is ignoring me. So I'm going to do it to them. But when you stand out and you just naturally greet them and just have joy, not making it weird, but just have joy in your heart. It does something to them. It does something to them. It gives them hope. 
and you don't even get to see the end result, but you don't need to. Sometimes you need to go about loving people with your eyes closed. Just, just love them and don't expect anything back. You're not a radar. Sometimes you need to tell people the truth and challenge their beliefs with your eyes closed. You do not need to know what rank they are. You do not need to know what position they are. The only thing that you need to know about is that God is in control and that God loves you. God sees when you show them love. God sees them when you challenge their wicked authorities. And all you need to know is that God is going to take care of everything. You don't even need to see because God sees for you. Luke 6, 32 talks about this as well. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those who, from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. Everything we tend to do, believe it or not, <laughs> in our spirit, our old man self, we always want something back. When people give gifts, they expect, oh, when it's my turn, when it's my birthday, somebody's going to give it back to me. <laughs> really, uh, we, we, we think selfishly like that. Like, well, I attended all their gatherings. So when I welcome them, they're going to attend mine. No, we need to change our mindset to seeking what God wants. To give and don't expect anything back. And the one in heaven will see what we do and he rewards us. But just being able to to make somebody a better person and fill them with joy should be enough with our eyes closed. Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Amen. Now, this is something that I have personally seen in my life. The next verse. Hebrews 13, 2. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. I remember when the Lord gave me the idea to make four bags, four duffel bags full of clothes and toothpaste and shoes and the Bible and uh, what what was the other book I put? Uh, I can't remember, but it was, it was another great book. And I put all these things in, in these book bags. And I, I put four book bags in my car and I would go to different parks and things and I would just walk until I found someone that I believed the Lord would lead me to find someone. And he did. On four trips, all four of those book bags were gone. One of the trips, I, even, I, I didn't even think I was going to find anybody to give away the book bags. It was winter time. And there was a little kid at my apartment complex as I was driving home. Didn't find anybody. He was outside in the snow, stuck out of his apartment barefooted. It makes absolutely randomly no sense. But guess who had a book bag with a pair of shoes in it? One book bag left, one pair of shoes left. And guess those pair of shoes fit that probably 13 year old boy who was stuck outside. It made no sense. See, <laughs> Sometimes we entertain angels unaware. A few of the things that when I've asked the Lord to do things, I've met strangers and they've asked weird requests. One lady, she just wanted some French fries from McDonald's. And at the end of it, after she's eating her French fries, she licked her hand 
And then she's like, well, thank you for the fries. And then she put her hand out for me to shake it. Now, this wasn't COVID season. Did I go, yeah, I'm not going to shake. No, I shook her hand. I shook her hand. Sometimes the Lord tests us to see what we're going to do. And that point, I never seen that woman disappear, but I remember once when two boys were going to jump me and I was age 13, I was outside a, a store. I walked out and these two, two kids were going to jump me and out of nowhere appears this older black lady and she says, hey, what y'all doing? And the kids run away. And as they're running away, I turn back to look at her and she's gone. She disappeared. Sometimes we entertain angels unaware. Sometimes the Lord tests us. And when it comes to taking care of strangers and showing strangers love, the Lord sees it. As John 4, 23, 24 says, In spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. He wants to know what we're going to do when we don't get anything back. When we know we're never going to see anybody again. He wants to know what happens when we get on an airplane and fly away, far away from home, for only three days. How do we treat the people in those three days away from home? Do we treat them like we're never going to see them again? We're in a, a faraway country? Or do we treat them like their soul matters? Like their soul is the most important thing ever. And I know this is a darker thing, but that goes for people that maybe step out on their spouses when they go far away. Are you treating these people that these, these other women as though you love them as yourself, as though they're precious, as that though they're an image of God? Some people don't see it like that. But back to the main topic. Deuteronomy 13, 3 through 4. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God, God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. That was just shared with you to really let you understand that the Lord tests you. He wants to see what your heart is. So best believe, I've experienced it. You ask him for a mission, he's going to give you a mission. He's going to give you someone to love and care for strangers all the time. And it's a hobby. It becomes something that you want to do. You want to share the joy that God has given to you. It becomes your passion to share to strangers to strangers, those are your neighbors. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and love your strangers as yourself. Dear Heavenly Father, may we learn to go about with our eyes as though we're blindfolded, and it doesn't matter what happens, where we get the echo of love back. We don't need that. Yes, it's, it, it, it's awesome, it's cool when we get it back, but guess what? We don't need that, Father, because you're all we need. And you bless us, and you love us. That is all we need in return. May many be saved, Father. And may many that are suffering, may you alleviate their suffering. May you give them hope, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Goodbye.